Hello, I'm Mo. I'm Amy, Dr. Amy Harwick. I'm Sin. And today we are having the, the sex, sex talk. And what are we talking about today, guys? Uh, long distance relationships mm -hmm. and how that impacts intimacy and mm -hmm. sexuality. Talk. I yeah, okay. so you know, long distance relationships can be really difficult, but they can also bring aspects into a relationship that add a lot more closeness and more desire to see each other, missing someone, intensity. So there's definitely pros and cons to having a long distance relationship. And I know Sin being a musician that travels, you typically aren't going to be in one place a long time. So essentially, a lot of your relationships can have that element, right? No, definitely. It's, um, I mean, being in a relationship while you're in a touring band ha does have its pros and cons. Um, it, you touched on, you know, that missing mm -hmm. someone uh, feeling. Mm -hmm. When you're gone for a couple months at a time and, and you don't see someone, it almost brings that kind of newness to it, you mm -hmm. know, when you come back home. And it keeps things, uh, at least for me, it, I've found it keeps things kind of fresh mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, of course, it sucks being away from the person that you care about, you know, but um, being a, a musician, you kind of learn to do certain things and mm -hmm. to, you know, try to make up for that, mm -hmm. that you know, that, that time that you, that you spent apart. Um, you have to get creative. You have to get very creative, I have to say. Well, it creates um, a sense of longing, and sometimes yeah. when I work with couples that feel like their sex life or their relationship has felt dull or they don't get excited by each other, I'll suggest that I do things that will create a sense of longing, whether it's right. take time apart, spend less time together, have mm -hmm. intentional once a week dates, mm -hmm. um, go take a weekend on your own. Band. Yeah, send them off and have a man. <laughs> um, Autonomy and independence are also really good mm -hmm. ways to sort of like build that. Right, you, you have know, your own life. When excitement. you're on tour, that's your life. Like you're on a bus, on the road, and that's separate from your relationship, so you have your own autonomous existence. Yeah. And that creates a sense of longing, and you also have to work to maintain the connection. Um, if you live together and you were together 24 7, um, you're seeing each other every day, so you don't really have to do that in that same way, but when you're not physically together, it's phone calls and FaceTime mm -hmm. and sending gifts or doing thoughtful things that are more creative other than just coming home and giving the person a hug and a kiss and saying, Yeah. yeah. I love you. That's a, that would be a pro. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And and uh, you'd be surprised how creative you get when you're yeah. you know, away from, from the person that you're with. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, thank God in today's day and age, I mean, it's a lot easier to communicate with, with people. I remember, you know, touring 20 plus years ago and being in Europe and, you know, getting phone cards that mm -hmm. cost, you know. Prepaid phone cards. Yeah, exactly. Remember when cell phones are really yeah, expensive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, yeah. Pre, this is pre-cell phones. And, um, you know, you, just you, to try we, to... We did a long distance episode where they were like faxing each other with oh, letters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you try to find different ways, you know, to, yeah. to mm -hmm. stay connected. But now, but you do it's it. a lot easier. Of yeah, course, of when course. I was, uh, I was in a long distance relationship with a musician about 20 years ago before cell phones were really a thing. And it was letters. We sent letters wow. back and forth. We were creative. We cut out like words from magazines and would paste yeah. them and just do these like really fun creative packages for each other mm -hmm. yep. because that was fun we could look forward to these things in the mail and now with like what you can do with cell phones whether it be recording videos for each other or facetiming or mm -hmm. sending even memes you know i think there's things sure. that people yeah. say you know you're not in a relationship till you start <laughs> tagging each other in memes but it is a way to say hey i'm thinking about you with this funny thing right right, right. right. or right. like right. you know right. your friendships are close mm -hmm. until you start tagging each mm -hmm. other in memes um, I've never heard that before. Yeah, <laughs> Mod <laughs> modern problems, you know, modern modern things. Um, but it, it is true, you know. Sometimes I'll I'll look at Instagram and I'll think of something that makes me think of a friend or somebody mm -hmm. I care a lot about. And I might send it to them because it, it might can, make them yeah, smile. Yeah, you can just tag them in there. No, yeah, it might make them yeah. a little chuckle yeah. or something. But yeah. it's it's letting the person know that you are thinking you're of thinking them about. and letting them know that you're on that they're on your mind and right. vice versa. That's that's the most important thing. I mean, if you're in a you know committed relationship whatever that may be um is just letting them know that you're thinking about them that they that mm -hmm. they are on your mind right. um because when for me you know when we're out there we're in front of thousands of people every night mm -hmm. and um you know you still you gotta let the person 
now that it's back home, mm -hmm. you know, because you ha I think you have to work a little bit harder. I think you right. have to work a little bit harder. Right. Um, and maybe have a little bit more structure or yes. some rules yeah. around mm -hmm. how often you communicate and right. how, you know, are we going to check in every day? What kind of a check in yeah. are we going to have? There's certain, yeah, no, I agree. There, there's certain almost rituals that, mm -hmm. that I've developed that, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of follow right. um, when I'm gone. Right. Um, you know, there are times where I'm literally walking on stage in front of like 100,000 people and I'm on the phone and I'm like, hey, uh, <laughs> love you, yeah, if you have there, love you, listen to you, like, you know, just, just, so, yeah. just so they know right. that you were thinking about them, right. you know, so right. it's stuff like that I think is very That's important. That's important, yeah. yeah. What about maintaining like an intimate connection when you're physically not together? That can be really difficult. Um, I know that it's a very easy answer to say, well, you can send sexy photos back and forth, but then you always have the risk of people hacking into stuff or somebody right. showing pictures yeah. right. of that being well, handled. There is what Skype dates now. You can have like yeah, Skype, Skype sex dates, dates and yep. you know a sexy time on a on a FaceTime type thing, mm -hmm. sending pictures back and forth, which may or may not be a different level of explicit. Some people right. are more or less. Um, or even just saying, you know, I was thinking about you when I was alone and, and masturbating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is still really important even with long Mas distance. Masturbation yeah. becomes very important part of the relationship, mm -hmm. I think, for people that are in long distance relationship. Mm -hmm. In the sense that you now actually get an opportunity to share the masturbation with your partner. Mm -hmm. And I think that most people don't do that. And mm -hmm. so I feel right. like in long distance relationships you have an opportunity to do something a little bit outside of the box mm -hmm. in that sense. And discuss it and say, well, I was thinking about you or this is yeah. where my mind was. Yeah. Um, whereas it's not something that's, like you said, is commonly done in relationships that don't have a long distance <laughs> element or people that are already really discussing sexuality in that type of way. And right. I think that's a good suggestion for people in not long distance relationships to talk about yeah. masturbation and what their fantasies are and how they can incorporate that into conversation with their partner. It's tough, you know, um, just being in a in, in a long distance relationship is is tough enough. When you're in a band yeah. and you're traveling with mm -hmm. other people, like on a tour, on a tour bus, bus, it makes it even tougher for you to have that sort of mm -hmm. alone time. Mm -hmm. You know, and even when uh, you you are at hotels and stuff like that, mm -hmm. oftentimes you're sharing rooms. Mm -hmm. You know, with you know, with your with your yeah, yeah. Right? So, so yeah, 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 exactly. So I mean, it it, it definitely your good friend yeah, <laughs> yeah. You find you know, you just try to find different um, ways to find that sort of alone time. You Sexy know? So time. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, phone calls are always, I think, mm -hmm. um, uh, easier. You know, mm -hmm. than trying to set. Of a video. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, if you if you if you happen to every now and then, you know, and I'm just talking about you know my own personal experiences. Every now and then, you know, you do end up with your own hotel room and stuff yeah. like that, so it makes it a little bit it's more special. Yeah, those times exactly, sure. exactly. But yeah. other times, I mean, you know, you're traveling. You're we're if we don't get a hotel room, we are on the bus for yeah. hours and hours, yeah. and you're just mm -hmm. in your bunk. Yeah, and there's yeah. people walking by, and yeah. there's people. And like, they have and, you know relationships, you know. And yeah, I I was in a relationship from my early twenties for many years where I lived on a bus as well, so I can completely empathize with that yeah. that lifestyle. And you know, I lived on the bus. I was there all the time working for the band, but everybody else had partners that would travel in for a week, and then they would leave, and mm -hmm. and people have people visiting at different times. So not only are you in the small space with all this other people where you don't have privacy, you have other people having their one week visit right. with their partner yep. in the small space when you're also there and it's it can be really challenging too navigating that and also missing your own partner. So right. you know, not, maybe not everybody's had the experience of living on a bus. I'm glad I had that experience many years ago. I don't know if I can repeat that at the stage. Um, glad and, I had it. And I think it's also <laughs> another very important thing that we're sort of, you know, that we talk about mm -hmm. whether or not you're going to be monogamous when you're on tour. Right. 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 What are the rules? What are the, and oh, not even monogamous as far as like, maybe it's direct sex with other partners, but it's also how much am I allowed to or not allowed to? How much is are, okay the rule for around, talking to other yeah, people? Yeah, right. Am I allowed to be, you know, you know is this okay? Is flirtations, hookups, kissing, like what's allowed, right. what's not allowed? Mm -hmm. being, yeah. being realistic about that I think is really mm -hmm. important because your, your partner's at home alone, you're out on the road alone, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like there's going to be opportunity probably for both parties. And how do you manage it and disclose it? What and that's the... actually very important because, um, you know, oftentimes uh, we get sort of the brunt of, well, you're out there yeah. and you're, you know, but 
it's it's the same way for us when we leave someone you know back home is the opportunities are there you yeah know? especially so, if your home is los angeles exactly right? I, I think it, it's it's it definitely goes both ways yeah. you know yeah. it's not just one-sided with yeah. that but i think you know you have to discuss all those things obviously you know from the get-go mm -hmm. and and establish what is What's uh, what is okay and what's, what's not okay yeah, and yeah. what and you know what type of relationship you're in mm -hmm. if you're in a completely monogamous relationship and you know that this is it it's just one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one, that's it mm -hmm. everything else is off limits then yeah. you know fine. then you need to define you know? that i exactly. think that when we leave it ambiguous that's well, when problems arise, of course right? of course if, you, if you're just well let's just see what happens then the problems are no, going that, to that, arise, i mean right? you, you cannot go into yeah. you, you can't go i mean not only just a, a long term but uh, or long distance but um you know, someone where someone's constantly traveling, mm -hmm. yeah. it, you can't leave it. Ambiguous. Right. No. So yeah. being no. able yeah. to have clear, defined discussions about what the relationship boundaries are, yeah. and even going beyond using the words poly or monogamous or open, because those can be very <clears throat> ambiguous too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really discussing yeah. Not specifics, only like details, yeah. sexual like specifics, what? flirtation specifics, yeah. and also disclosure. Some couples want to hear when there's been another flirtation, some people yeah. don't. and. So talking about disclosure, flirtation, sexuality, all of it, what you those know. boundaries are in your relationship. And recognize that mm -hmm. even if you talk about it, that doesn't mean it, something new won't come up. Right. right. It, pretty much a situation will come up and then that will require an additional conversation and maybe yeah. a change in the dialogue or in mm -hmm. the specific guidelines you have in your own relationship. So right. this is applicable to not just long distance or touring relationships, but all relationships. Yeah. And very important for touring and Yes. Long Very, it's what I what I've distance. seen the most problematic right. or the most uh, challenging, especially with friends that have been in touring bands, is when it's not discussed explicitly. Mm -hmm. And if it was discussed explicitly, maybe certain things that occurred may not have been an issue. Mm -hmm. So it's when there's dishonesty right. that right. it becomes a problem, right. Right. rather than the actual act itself. And assumptions, because if mm -hmm. it's not discussed, we assume that oh my partner's probably not going to be okay with this, or maybe they are going to be okay They're with this. Threatened by people can be threatened by mm -hmm. situations when right. if it's discussed openly and honestly. It, you know, somebody can choose not to be in a relationship. Also, they might say, you know, that would actually be okay as long as it cross doesn't cross over into this behavior or this yeah. emotion. Right. So, right. clear discussions, clear boundaries with emotion, behavior, expectations, flirtation. Long distance can be really tough. Touring in a band with a bunch of usually men with on socks. a small space socks and bug socks. <laughs> what do you say about just, just we were talking about uh, masturbation on the road because you know you got to be creative by yourself too. And you know something that's kind of what I learned um, back when I was around this community, <laughs> not directly uh, uh, by accident. By accident. Um, is that sometimes uh, men that live into our buses, or this is what I found in this community, will ejaculate into a sock uh, when they masturbate. Not me. I've never, done, I've never so done that. I've never done that. does not have a bunk sock. I've never done that. Um, but when you think about the fact that, you know, what is it, like eight or twelve bunks are very close to one another, you might have a drive day where you're all on this bus and this close quarters, not a lot to do besides watch movies, play mm. on your phone, you know, people can masturbate and you're very close yeah. to other people <laughs> and you're not going to get out of the, as they should. the bus and wash <laughs> your hands and like have a mess right. in front of everyone. That makes so sense. It makes perfect sense. It's a logical yeah. solution. They should have like a little basket where they do the, like a big clear <laughs> So the note, yeah. do not Sock touch. <laughs> right, right. Maybe like a designated color. Might market that for tour buses. Right, red socks. Yeah. Don't touch them. Business yeah. idea. Um, but you know, you get creative when with your sexuality and your solo sexuality mm -hmm. when you're long distance yeah. or you're in a situation where you're in close quarters with other people. Yeah. And you see this whether it be musicians or people in the military, uh, anything mm -hmm. where there's long distance with a yeah. lot of people that are close together. Yeah. Um, you have to use creativity and a lot of communication with sexuality relationships and yeah all so of the above. so to wrap up creativity mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. embrace it talk mm -hmm. to each other open and honest enjoy accept have fun mm -hmm. explore and i think that was the sex the talk. sex talk. Watch, out for socks. <laughs> watch out for socks watch out for socks <laughs> or buy a flashlight yeah. flashlight not a flashlight flashlight might hurt <laughs>